Well, good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It is Thursday. It is time for our daily devotion, dear friends. So I want to invite you to come and join me for our devotion time together. I'm trying to get myself here situated just a little bit. I've, uh, I apologize. I'm a little bit behind on getting here today. Got kind of wrapped up in um, sermon working on my sermon a little bit and so my apologies for being just a little tardy good to see all of you glad so many of you are already prepared for me good night you guys are all here already hello Linda hello Jack good morning Stacy good morning Shirley you guys are all prompt and right on time thank you very much good to see all of you today I'm going to flip in my Bible here real quick. I'm going to Psalm chapter 94. That's where we're reading out of. If you want to join me there, Psalm chapter 94. We're going to read verses 16 to 19. Good morning, Barbara. Glad you're here today. Psalm chapter 94, verses 16 to 19. We'll wait just a little bit, see if anybody else uh, makes their way to come and join with us. Psalm 94, 16 to 19 again is our reading for today. Just a little bit. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Chris. Good morning to both of you. Glad both of you are here with us today. Good to see you. Psalm 94, verses 16 to 19. Dr. McAllister, glad to have you with us. Glad you're here, David. Psalm 94, 16 to 19. So let's begin with our prayer of illumination, friends. O oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. Prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Amen. Psalm 94. Verses 16 to 19 reads, Who will stand up for me against the wicked? Who will help me against evildoers? If the Lord hadn't helped me, I would live instantly in total silence. Whenever I feel my foot slipping, your faithful love steadies me, Lord. When my anxieties multiply, your comforting calms me down. So here's our uh, devotion writer for today. It's Doreen Alvarez. Doreen is from Florida. Her focus verse is that 19th verse, which says, When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. That's the NIV version. Out of the uh, common English, it was, When my anxieties multiply, your comforting calms me down. Okay? So here is Doreen's devotion that she writes for us today. Let's take a moment to consider this. She says, many times I have stressed over things beyond my control. Can I get an amen on that? <laughs> right? How many of us have done that as well? I began to ask myself, why? Do I doubt God? Then my friend suggested that when I felt stressed and worried over something, I should write it down, put it in a God box, and stop fretting about it. One day when I was stressing over things I could not control, I tried this. I wrote my worry on a piece of scrap paper, prayed, cried, and put it in the box. I may have prayed a few more times, but eventually I forgot about it. Whenever a new issue came up, I wrote it down, I put it in the box. 
and when I eventually decided to empty the God box, I couldn't remember a single thing I had written. Over the years, I have grown in my faith and no longer need a physical God box. I am better able to surrender my worries to God and trust that God cares for my concerns. I realize now that the answer to my earlier question is that I wasn't trusting God. But God has always cared for me. I have learned to trust more and doubt less with renewed hope and joy. So the thought for the day is I can grow in my faith by trusting God with my concerns. Now, I'm not sure if any of you have this kind of practice that you do as well. Uh, for some of you, it may literally be that you write something down that you are worried about. Uh, maybe it's um, on a scrap piece of paper. Uh, you cry over it. You pray over it. Maybe you've literally put it in a box. Or this might be something that some of us want to try, right? Um, because we, we need to figure out how to um, stop stressing over things that are beyond our control. Many of us have those. We have those things that we worry about that are beyond our control. I'll give you mine, right? Um, every single week, I look at the attendance for our congregation, and I think about folks that are here, and I give thanks to God for folks that are here, and I give thanks to God for the folks that are online with us and come and join and watch worship. But my stress, my worry, my concern is, is how do we maintain that connection with one another? Because it's hard to maintain a connection with people when you're not here, and it's hard to maintain a connection with someone who isn't here and you are. But, you know, that's beyond my control. That's not something that Jim Hoffman has control over. And so I pray about these things, and I try to leave them with God to work on and, and to empower and, and to make things uh, happen in our lives, in your lives and in my life, right? So that's one of those things that, for me, I kind of give over to God as much as I can because it's not something I can control um, each and every Sunday. So that's that's kind of my thing. But you know, for others of you, you may use a different kind of technique. It may be journaling. You might write down in your journal the things that you um, are stressed about and are beyond your level of control. Others of us, we may have no mechanism whatsoever. And so we live under this kind of con uh, constant anxiety and this kind of constant stress, particularly about the things that are, that are around us that affect us, but we have no power or ability to change. How do we learn what it means to have greater faith in God than what we do the physical world around us or our own power that we have? Right? Because in many ways, we are taught that we can work through our own circumstances with the right tools or with the right aid. We can fix most anything in our lives, whether it be health or mental or physical, right? Um, if you're not doing well in your physical kind of uh, life, you can hire a, a physical therapist to come and help you. You know, I had thumb surgery. I'm going to physical therapy for my thumb. Right? And that physical therapist is helping me get my range of motion and my grip and all those things back. Eventually, I'll get back to probably 85 or 90 percent um, on that. It's something that I can affect and I can change. We can hire people to help us do those kinds of things. We can consult others about it. We think we can fix most everything until it comes to the thing that's beyond our control. And it seems like we stress and, and, and fritter over and worry about the things that we really can't control. How do we gain a greater sense of who God is in our lives and a greater trust that God is working out these things on our behalf? Maybe it's more time in prayer. Maybe it's more time laying these things down at God's feet at God's throne. Maybe it is learning to just simply pray over and lean in and trust. Maybe it's looking back on your life and thinking about all those moments where you something was beyond your control and yet God saw you through that moment. There's things that we can do that can help us grow in our faith and help us trust God more 
with what we are worried about, anxious over, stressed about. So let's learn together what it means for us to trust more and doubt less, that we might have a renewed hope and a renewed joy in the God who cares for each and every one of us. Let us pray. Dear God, in our times of need, we ask that you open our eyes to your love and your faithfulness. Help us to grow in our faith by surrendering every one of our struggles to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks, friends, for being here today. Again, always a joy to have you. I will look forward to being with you tomorrow for our devotion time, so I invite you to come and join me at this same time. We'll be on Facebook on the St. John's page at 11.43 or so, kind of a little couple minutes before, but come and join me if you would. Hope you enjoy the rest of this beautiful Thursday. God's rich grace and peace be upon you. I will look forward to being with you tomorrow. Thanks, everybody.